Hey, this is another example of the EM algorithm. Uh, this is part 2B. And here we're, we're going to fl uh, be flipping two coins in a unique way. And then we're going to use the e EM algorithm to uh, find some uh, the probabilities of a head of each coin and we're, the probability that we're selecting a coin. And that'll make sense in a second here. So we're going to have we're going to uh, have two coins. Um, and Z is going to be an indicator variable, 1 if it's coin 1 and 0 if it's coin 2. Um, the probability of uh, a head on coin 1 is P1 and P2 is the probability of a head on coin 2. A parameter is uh, a P1, P2 and actually we should I should put pi in there too and you'll see that in a second. Darn it. So we're going to randomly pick a coin and we're going to let pi be the probability that we pick coin 1 and 1 minus pi is coin 2. We're going to uh, flip that coin m times. We're going to repeat steps 1 and 2 n times. And then we're going to find the MLEs for uh, pi p1 and p2. So here is a setup of the scenario. So we're going to randomly pick a coin and then we're going to flip it m times and then that's just the row sum. Z2 is the, you know, we randomly picked a coin, flipped it n times, that's the sum of, of that. And we're going to repeat it n times. So if we want to find the density or the of this or the PMF, probably mass function, of an XIJ is are these so it's the ith coin pick and the jth toss and this is the ith coin and we're given the parameters uh, p1 p2 um, then you can condition that into this then which boils down to this and so if z is 1 we end up with this and if z is 0 we end up with this piece so this is the probability mass function So here, um, to find the likelihood of our probability mass function, we uh, we have to take the product over all j, which is the rows, and then all i, which is the the, co the columns in the rows, and we get this, and then we can expand that to this. Now the uh, first product goes into these X's so it could be the sum of XIJ or we're just going to call it XI dot in each of those and then we can't quite expand this the over I just yet but here's the, the uh, um, likelihood function and then we take the log likelihood of that and since this is a product and then that becomes a sum and so the, all the exponents come out front and then it's the log of, of pi and then we do that for each of those so here we get uh, zi xi dot zi xi dot log of p1 and we do that for each uh, parameter. Now I have a asterisk here because we're going to come back to this. This is the likelihood and then later we're going to take an expectation of this likelihood but in terms of the over the missing values density for the missing values. Um, but one note here to maximize this we we're going to maximize over P1, P2 and uh, these pi's so the zi are constant. So whatever they are, um, you know, they are, you know. And so we're gonna these the 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 p1 and p2 and pi are gonna be functions of these zi and zi dots. But we could replace this zi with some other constant. We could call it zi star or zi t and and, and when we maximize, it's going to be the same thing, but we're just going to replace ZI with ZIT 
and that'll make more sense in a minute. So, but to find the maximum likelihood estimates, it's this. And, and it makes sense. Here we're just counting the number of ones divided by n, which is the number of times we pick coin one, so that's the probability. And here it's the number of heads using coin one divided by how many times we flipped it, which is the probability of a head using coin one. Same way for coin two. So in this setting, we know the maximum likelihood estimate. Okay, here we're going to reformulate the problem. And we're going to let z be unknown. And then we're going to use the EM algorithm to find the maximum likelihood estimators for P1, P2, and pi. And what that means is when we randomly pick a coin, we don't know which coin is being picked. But we will observe the outcomes of that given coin. And then we'll repick another coin. And we don't know if it's coin one or two, but we'll observe the outcomes. And then we're going to find the EM out or the maximum likelihood estimates of pi, P1, and P2. Okay. So in the EM algorithm, the E step, we need to find Q, which is the expected value of the log likelihood with regards to the missing data given our observed and our initial guess of T. So we need to, I'm going to find the distribution for z given data and an estimate of theta t which is here so this it can be that's z given x so then the the inter intersection of those divided by the x and then here we can introduce a z and or sum over a z and then rewrite it as a conditional and this is we can rewrite in terms of this well this the, the top part we calculated before or yeah and then the bottom part is just the sum over you know is equal zero or one which is this and the one problem with this is Notice I used theta t, <coughs> and that means theta 1t, theta 2t, and pi t, and I forgot to put it in here. So really, all the p's should be p1t, pi t, p1t, okay, so that's a mistake. And now we want to find the expected value of this. And that means uh, some take each value of z times the probably mass function for that value and do that for all z. Well, z only takes on 0 and 1. So when z is 0, 0 times the probably mass function is 0, so it cancels out. So we let z equal 1. And, and then here's the density. So z is 1. This piece drops out. And we, and we get this, which is this numerator, and then the denominator stays the same. So this is the expected value of z. And we're going to call that zit. And the t is because we used our initial guesses for all the parameters. Okay. So now, when we take the expected uh, value of the log likelihood, we get this. And so this is the log likelihood. So when we take the expected value of this function, since it's a, a sum, it can just it can be taken in, and this is a constant with regards to z. So it's just the expected value of that, which we just calculated. So when we call it zit, and then we do that for each z. And so these are all, so the expected value is gonna be this, but with the zi's replaced with zit. So when we maximize this in regards to pi, p1, and p2, it's the same, except for the zi's will be all switched with zit. Okay, so we found the expected value, and 
And no, the, the expression really we replaced the ZITs with the ZIs. And we came up with this. These are the maximum likelihood estimates. Okay. So that's, that's our first step. So then what we do is we obtain T plus 1 estimates, so our second estimates. And then these estimates are all put back into this expression. And then we do it again. We come, then we calculate a ZI T plus 1. And then once we do that, then it comes down here. And, and then we get uh, T2 T plus 2. P1, T plus 2, pi, T plus 2, and we just keep repeating until we obtain convergence. Okay, so now I'm going to illustrate this in R um, before, we, before we go. Hey, here we're in R. We're going to illustrate the EM algorithm in the flipping two coin setting. I'm on a Linux based machine, Ubuntu specifically, and I'm using RK Ward. In for the R implementation. Okay, here, um, and we'll just go through these. Coin is going to represent the probability of choosing coin one. N is how many coins I'm going to pick, and M is how many times I'm going to flip each coin I pick. And P1 and P2 are the probability of obtaining a head on coin one and coin two. So let's load those in. We're going to create a matrix that holds our outcomes. That's X, and right now it's filled with missing values. Um, here we're going to find Z, and Z is a vector of zeros and ones, and and it tells us which coin we randomly picked. And so we're going to load Z with ones and zeros, and then we're going to have another vector that and so if we look at z it's zeros and ones it means we're picking we're picking coin one forty percent of the time that's what this means so there's roughly forty percent ones here <coughs> now i want to create another vector that corresponds to probabilities so this one, if it's coin 1, it's 0.3. If it's coin 2, it's 0.7. And, and then that is going to help me fill my x vector, the vectors the observed data, which is this step here. So now I have my x vector is full of 1s and zeros, corresponding to which coin I picked. But in, in the M algorithm, we only need the row sums. And so I'm going to overwrite my x matrix into an x vector just with the row sums. That's this. And so here I printed the totals of each row. And actually that's what this the parentheses around an assignment does. It makes the assignment and then it prints the values. Um, and then the EM algorithm, we need initial guesses of our parameters. Here this is pi. Uh, temporary one estimate. This is P1 temporary one estimate or first estimate. P2 this is a temporary first estimate and so I, we just guess well here 0.4 and 0.4 is exactly what it should be and then there so let's load that in and Z is the expected value of our likelihood function given in terms of the missing value given observed in a parameter space. That's what ZT is. So now when we do the EM algorithm we, we're going to do it just 500 loops and and here so we're going to estimate P or pi that's our second estimate of pi. And this is going to be our second estimate of P1, which is this. And this is going to be our second estimate of P2. And these are from the formulas used in the what we just went over. And, we're, and then you reset the second back to the first in each of these cases. Recalculate our new estimate of Z. 
and then go back and then we're going to calculate our third estimate and so this we just loop through this updating each time we're going to do it 500 times and we're going to print the estimates so let's do that so here um, th this is pi so that's the probability of coin one p1 is probably of a head p2 is probably of, of a head on coin two now this is the true likelihood estimate maximum likelihood estimate and then this is what the EM algorithm converged to with 500 loops I'm not going to test it with more loops this is just illustration purposes um, but we do you know we are going to change our initial guesses we'll change it to 0.2 and and 0.3 and rerun and see what we come up with and oh darn it I really wanted to be able to see these and so we we come up with the same guesses I mean we only changed our initial guess you know we didn't change our x vector or, or our z or x matrix or z matrix so let's do this again now here here's the the only oddity oh actually let's change the our initial guess for picking coin one to point seven keep the others um, we'll say point one point nine and then re-estimate and we come up with the same thing same estimates here is one oddity though let's let's switch our guesses I mean so notice I'm making P1 always less than P2 but let's switch that let's make that 0.6 and this is 0.2 and uh, and we can make that 0.4 it doesn't matter and let's rerun so remember we have the same X same true Z and we're rerunning so our maximum likelihood estimate should be the same because nothing has changed but the oddity is that it converges to one minus, you know what it what it should. So that's one minus. That's one minus. That's one minus. It just seemed interesting to me. I'm not going to investigate why. I'm sure there's a logical reason. But let's let's change it so my P1 estimate is less than my P2 estimate, and um, but instead of using uh, 22 you know or th yeah 33 picks of a coin flips of a coin let's go to 100 flips of a coin still we're just going to do this experiment 22 times but each coin we're going to flip a hundred and then let's rerun the EM algorithm and notice that the maximum likelihood estimates are right they're identical they're right on the money so as n increases you know there, this is going to be asymptotically equivalent. So, anyway, I find it pretty fascinating how it all works out. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, I think we're going to do two or three more examples of using the EM algorithm.